everyone, and uh, welcome to today's Help Systems webinar, How to Monitor Your Complex IBMI Environment. Coming to you from beautiful northern Wisconsin here in the USA, along with uh, Ash in uh, Peterborough in the UK. Thanks for joining us. So today our topic is around monitoring the many applications that help your IBM, and IBMI environment function and how to detect and notify when things go bad. So we're talking about things like BRMS, Mimix, PowerHA, BIOS, IBM MQ, not to mention just monitoring the typical health aspects of your IBMI. So we're going to talk about how to monitor this environment, whether it's a single partition, multiple partitions, and so forth. It, it kind of makes your head spin when you think about everything that you need to keep track of. And uh, we might be able to help with our robot monitor tool. So my name is Chuck Lasinski. I am the Director of Technical Solutions here at Help Systems. And a uh, long time on IBMI, and uh, was out there in the real world as well, uh, uh, managing multiple AS400, I-Series, and IBMI. And I'm joined together today with Ash Giddings. Ash, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you, Chuck. Doing well, and um, I guess like you, I lived in the real world as well at some stage, and um, I once worked for the the largest, um, I guess, IBM power shop in Europe at one stage, a, a brewery in the in the middle of England, a huge, um, huge brewery, huge uh, IBM enterprise. It was absolutely huge, and um, Sounds like one a... of the first one of the first places to get BRMS um, outside of the US, anyway. Okay. Sounds like a fantastic place to work. It was ever changing. Every time you went back on shift, there was another machine appeared. We ran out of letters in the alphabet because we just used to go <laughs> by the alphabetical name. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to turn off my webcam. It's enough of sharing uh, our, our mugs. And um, Ash, why don't you? Talk a little, uh, talk to us a little bit about the agenda. Yeah, indeed. Thank you, Chuck. Well, we'll start today by talking about what what metrics or what elements require require monitoring in products such as BRMS, which I just alluded to, uh, Mimix, Power HA, um, our own Robot HA, IBM MQ, which we seem to keep bumping into, and of course Vias. And as we go along, Chuck will then show and explain, along with live demos, how Robot Monitor can help keep an eye on these, these environments and how you can have them shown graphically. We'll then see how easy it is to build your own dashboard before starting to look at historical reporting. We'll then hopefully have some time to answer some questions, so feel free to use the, uh, the webinar chat question feature and uh, fire us your questions away. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to start by asking for a little interaction from our audience. The question is, where do you struggle with IBMI monitoring? So is it uh, an issue with too many interfaces to navigate, uh, too many IBMI partitions to watch, just too busy to go look, and basically you want the system to reach out to you? Um, maybe you're looking for a single view of your operation. Historical information could be uh, important as well. So choose your, uh, pick your poison, so to speak. And uh, we'll give you another uh, 15 seconds or so to respond to this question. And, you know, we see um, a combination of these when we talk to our uh, robot monitor prospects and, um, you know, our operations staff are being asked to do more and more. And uh, so providing some kind of automated tool is just just really critical. So let's, let's close the poll. And I'm not surprised, Ash, at all with the results. Too busy. Yes. Um, we see that quite often, um, that people need a tap on the shoulder. They need to know that something's going wrong. They want an alert of some, court, of some sort, whether it's a, an email or an SMS or something visual. They don't have time to go hunting for problems anymore. Um, so that's 67%. The other 67% is, 
is given operations a single view and we see this more and more now i think what i get what traditional ibmi system administrators are being tasked with monitoring other platforms because linux can run on power and aax it's hey you know you look after that as well so you end up having to be a, a specialist in each of these areas so um hopefully today we can show you how using robot monitor you can have a consolidated um, view across your whole enterprise irrespective of underlying platform wonderful so we're going to move on to uh, monitoring capabilities today and if you go to the next slide please chuck this is what we're going to show you really so this is robot monitor this is the uh, the, uh, the underlying architecture um, the current support for the product extends to IBMI, where it all started, AIX, Linux, and Vios. In fact, anything that you can run on IBM Power. Now, most of you will know if you're running IBMI or AX in your business, you'll have applications residing on them. Vios is a little different, and I'll be explaining why shortly. It's a bit of a strange beast. So, on this image here, on the satellite uh, IBMI, AX, Linux, or Vios systems, there are a number of um, efficient collector jobs which gather data and send to a, a central machine, send to a central partition. Um, the robot monitor GUI then connects to that central partition, enables you to perform a graphical analysis across your whole enterprise. So you do need an IBMI partition to use the robot, uh, robot monitor. The tool also has the capability to send out notifications to message queues. So if you have an existing message monitoring tool, you can use that to get alerts out. Um, if you have a tool that has the SNMP GET facility, again, that can interface with Robot Monitor. Alternatively, by pairing Monitor with uh, Robot Alert or Network, you can get direct notifications out as SMSs, emails, or both. In addition, you can use Robot Alert to make way of two-way com uh, communications um, and respond to alerts in order to stop any escal escalation that you've got defined. Um, so that tap on the shoulder, it'll get to you via hook or by crook in one way, shape or form. Chuck, anything to add on the architecture side of things? Uh, Ash, I think you made a good point about you know, just reminding people that you know this is about uh, IBMI and that it does require the central IBMI host system where the data will be sent to and uh, we've got a methodology for storing that data very efficiently. And that's where we analyze it and we determine whether or not we need to send you out some notifications. So we'll show you what that looks like today. Ash, let's look at what, what's involved with BIOS monitoring. BIOS, BIOS, yeah, it's a strange beast. A quote I often used to hear about BIOS was, it's just a slimmed down, dimmed down version of AX, isn't it? Well, it is. And it isn't. It's um, the virus is part of IBM's Power VM, and it's a way of virtualizing physical resources across client partitions. I guess much the same as as VMware on Intel. And believe it or not, it was first um, introduced on IBM I on Power Six way back in 2008 with the advent of Six One. I, I find it incredible. And very few customers actually set virus up themselves. Often the initial deployment of VIAS has been done by external third parties or business partners. And as a result, the techies on the ground don't often understand what VIAS is or really the power they've got at their fingertips. More often than not, it's been set up to um, set up and forget. Um, it's normally deployed in pairs so that if you have a problem with one Fires partition, the other one takes over seamlessly. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't monitor them, as one of my customers discovered after losing the second in the pair, which caused a major outage because they'd lost the first one some months ago. They didn't know. So what should you be looking to monitor? Well, the status of the disk adapter, you're looking for good statuses here, and we can show you this shortly. Um, traditional things such as disk storage, strange things occur in virus when file systems become full. So set some thresholds um, as you would on a, a, a standard machine, should we call it, you know, around the 70 to 80% mark. Other items to include um, should be CPU usage for this and for memory. You'd probably only want to be alerted if uh, a threshold was breached and remain breached for a sustained period of time. 
spikes in CPU or, or memory, not really any use to you. You're looking for a sustained period of, of something happening. Um, processes and subsystem status monitoring can, can be of some value here. And as you can see in Robot Monitor, we can monitor uh, these metrics and an awful lot more. And Chuck is now going to jump into, um, into VIAS, I believe, Chuck, aren't you? Yeah, let's do that. So, um, and we're also going to introduce the Robot Monitor uh, GUI interface a little bit, and we're going to give you even a more thorough tour as we continue down this path. As Ash mentioned, VIOS is a uh, AIX operating system based tool. And uh, because of that, it uses memory and storage a little bit different. So uh, first of all, in my robot monitor GUI, at the top I have a list of dashboards that we're going to look at in a minute. And then down below are all of my systems and groups of systems that I'm monitoring. Chuck, sorry, just, could, you just, could you just shunt your, your GUI just to the right a, a little bit? We can't, we can't really see those, oh. uh, those things on the left-hand okay. side. Is that okay? That's perfect, thank you. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, so, uh, so as Ash mentioned, you know, storage and, and uh, uh, memory are used a little bit different uh, on your BIOS, and you will have typically at least a BIOS pair. So I do have two BIOS here, and as Ash mentioned, so for instance, our COM adapter ports are looking good, our, our fiber channel adapter ports are all looking good. And if not, we're gonna get notified. So we're gonna show you some notification here shortly. So I can look at my systems individually, or I can look at things uh, in groups, all right? So I have my BIOS pair, looking at CPU, system storage, memory utilization, processor and memory, error counts, and, uh, and so forth. All right, so this is a little preview of uh, what the robot monitor graphical interface looks like, and, and specifically around VIOS. All right, let's move on to BRMS. BRMS, yeah. So Backup Recovery and Media Services, or BRMS, um, to use the acronym, is great, and probably the most popular solution of this type out there for, for IBMI. Despite there being a central database, many tasks have to be conducted on every machine or every partition that you've got BRMS on. Um, there's typically there's no central view. I believe there's a there's a, a BRMS enterprise, but um, it doesn't seem to be that uh, prevalent out there. So in order to in order for BRMS to be available, there's some key things you want to monitor. Um, with BRMS up and running, there's nothing worse than uh, preparing a backup and discovering you haven't got enough expired tapes, for example. There's also some key messages in BRMS message log that can trip you up, such as tapes not being available, volume or tape ID not matching, or discovering you've got a write protected uh, tape. Um, so also tracking the sufficient number of expired tapes available is, uh, is of some use. Uh, subsystem typically uh, Q1A BRMM net, and then there's some mand what we call mandatory jobs that need to need to really live in there. There's QBRM net. This job monitors the the BRMS journal receivers for changes to the BRMS files. Um, that will then start the QBRMM QBRM sync job. Um, there's another job again that should be running uh, QNM A ping D. And that job is used to ping systems in the network before starting DDM functions. Again, that's important. Uh, there's Q1ACP DST, and that job is used to distribute emails and synchronize tape cartridge status across the network. There's QBRM Sync, I'm sure you've seen that one. That job handles the synchronization of uh, BRMS database changes between systems in the BRMS network. That job only runs when there's records that need to be processed and ends once the records have been processed. So that one, that one dips in and out. All right. Well, let's let's look at this now in uh, in a robot monitor. And I have uh, BRMS installed on a system called Academy. So once again, we're just going to look under our systems list. And in this case, we'll look at just a single system. And uh, 
what you're looking at here are vertical bars that are uh, explaining or showing you visually where a number of different metrics are like disk IO, CPU, and so forth. And uh, down below, I've got a, another group of metrics devoted to uh, BRMS. And so, as you can see, this is very visual. The color codes are uh, somewhat predefined for BRMS, but you can modify those. We'll show you how to do that in a minute. So, for instance, one of the things we're doing is we're looking at the BRMS log files for certain critical messages. Volume ID doesn't match cartridge ID, cartridge not found, and so forth. We're also looking at the number of expired volumes. In other words, the volumes that are available for us to use. All right, looks like we're a little short. Uh, as you mentioned, the Q1 ABRM net subsystem, which is down. All right, so I actually have uh, an email notification here saying that my uh, subsystem is down. Bring that up real quick. All right, so I've got an email notification here that I got free of a robot alert. And of course, I can see that visually as well. And these are uh, interactive in that I could simply right click on this and say, let's go ahead and start that subsystem. All right, and we do have to authenticate ourselves. We have to have proper credentials. All right, so that subsystem is going to start up. So uh, again, what you're seeing are the, the visual indicators. And then of course, we have the uh, email or message indicators as well that you might be having some kind of an issue. All right, let's talk about Mimix next. Mimix, yeah, so this has been around. Mimix has been around probably for 25 years. And for those of you who don't know, it's an IBMI logical replication tool based on uh, remote journaling. The vendor actually states, or quotes, that it can take up to 30 minutes per day uh, worth of manual checks to ensure everything is running as expected. Uh, to me, this sounds excessive, and with Robot Monitor, we can definitely help you dramatically reduce that. So there's quite a number of elements that need monitoring here, and remember, if you don't have adequate monitoring in place, you could find yourself in a situation, uh, maybe on a production machine, where you can't perform a roll swap to the backup box because of a, an undetected uh, issue, and any delay with a roll swap can be costly for your business. I mentioned Mimix is based on remote journaling, so be sure to monitor the uh, the RJ link status, uh, database status for both source and target, and the database sender, the reader and apply. Um, a lot of these metrics are, are built into Robot Monitor, so Chuck's going to show you, they're very easy to, to turn on. Uh, data great, database group status are also key. Um, for clarification, the data group is a, is a logical group consisting of data files, applications, libraries, data areas, and other objects. Object apply jobs, they do the applying of remote journal entries on the, on the target box. If these are held or in message weight, uh, the backlog of transactions will definitely increase. And again, that's gonna cause you problems if you need to do a role swap. Also ensure the objects in error, plus the files on hold or not journaled are monitored. Again, any one of these could potentially mean that your two nodes, source and target, are not in sync, meaning again, you're not in a position to roll swap. And I always think that the business has invested in um, another box. They've invested in a high availability solution, so they should be within their right to be ready to roll swap pretty much all the time. Now, there's one thing that's not on there, I'll just mention it, Chuck, and that's CPU. On occasions, this solution can use an excessive amount of CPU. And while you may have um, an abundance of it, at some stage, this will impact your core application. So worth keeping an eye on that as well. Right on, yeah. Yeah, so let's just take a quick look at uh, some of the monitoring that we have set up here on my Academy system again uh, around Mimix. First of all, we do have the vis visual indicators that show us things like data group status, right? Um, let's pass down here, objects in error, all right? And all the, all the uh, green and blue colors, ultimately they're cooler colors, so they are indicating that things look good. For instance, here with our audit compliance status looks good. In the item selection, this is 
all of the various metrics that we're collecting across our entire uh, universe. And it's a long list. We're going to look at some of these, um, some more of these as we go along. But I just wanted to show you the list of various MIMICS monitors that we have uh, built in to Robot Monitor. All right, starts here with the uh, MIMICS audit compliance, goes down here to the MIMICS system manager status. Now, of course, we're just looking at MIMICS on, on one system. You might create a dashboard that looks at you know, multiple source systems and multiple target systems. All right, now some, for something a little different, let's talk Power HA, Ash. Yeah, another HA solution, but this time uh, hardware based. It's an active, passive, shared storage clustering solution for, um, for IBM I, AX, and Linux. I think it was born on uh, AX actually. Um, increasingly popular. Um, it's almost set and forget. There's a lot less monitoring here than maybe with a logical replication solution. Um, there are a number of informational messages that might be of interest, um, but the key three, the three key elements to monitor are the, the cluster status, the node status, and the cluster resource group. The cluster provides the, the communication infrastructure between the system and all partitions, and this facilitates the execution of cluster events. Each participating system in a cluster is uh, in effect a node, so node status is, is, is relevant, really relevant here. And the cluster resource group defines which IBM I nodes are potential hosts for the IASP. That's something I didn't mention at the, at the start. This is uh, this is based on IASPs, actually, Power HA. Yep, independent ASPs, absolutely. And uh, I do have a, uh, a couple of systems that are uh, focused around uh, Power HA. They're called ABLE and ELBA, all right? And you can see we've got a little bit of an indicator here on our cluster resource group that there might be an issue. And uh, here on my ELBA system, you can see the problem is that my node is inactive, all right? So we've got some notification around that. Uh, here's my email notification, all right, that my ELBA target system for uh, Power HA is not active. All right, so proactive notification, uh, individual system monitoring, and then you'll see here uh, when we get to the dashboard section that we also have a dashboard that's dedicated to Power HA, all right, it's part of our HA monitoring. All right, so let's move on. Speaking of uh, uh, monitoring HA, let's talk about uh, robot HA. Yeah, so for those of you that are unaware, Robot HA is, uh, is Help Systems logical replication tool for IBMI, enabling you to, to replicate as much or as little data as you'd like to a secondary partition, maybe a subset of data for development purposes or everything for um, you know full role swap capabilities, either within your data center to another site, maybe to a managed service provider or increasingly common to a, to a cloud partition somewhere. And this solution looks after itself really well, but there are some key elements that you can use uh, Robot Monitor to check. Um, there's a single subsystem to monitor, um, RSFHA, same on the source and target. Four job queues that, uh, that route into it. Again, these, these job queues should always be in a release state. Um, there's a, what I call a mandatory job. That job there, I'm not going to start to start to say it, but this typically runs in the background and handles incoming requests from other machines to connect to the current machine using RSF, which is the underlying protocol we use. And by default, this job runs in QSIS work. So again, let's make sure QSIS work is is active too. Um, think of this job as a as a traffic manager, in effect. Uh, comms takes place over TCP port 602. Can change that but most users tend to leave that so it's worth checking that this is active and being used by the product um, what else have we got in here I think you're going to show us what we can uh, what we can do in here Chuck yeah let's jump into that so uh, we have a couple of systems dedicated to uh, robot HA replication and uh, the first one is a system called wisdom all right, so I just selected my wisdom system and you can see my group of metrics that are monitoring a robot HA down here in the lower left-hand corner says everything's good, everything's green. 
right? So you can see our uh, subsystem is active. Our uh, uh, critical RSF job, as Ash mentioned, is active. And uh, we are going to show you in just a second. I'm not going to show you right now, but we do have a dashboard dedicated to both Robot HA and Power HA showing all the critical metrics. And uh, before we do that, we're going to talk about one other specific application. Let's talk about IBM MQ. MQ, yeah. Again, it's been, it's been around a, a long time. It's a middleware product and allows you to send uh, messages. So think, uh, think data or information. Um, it allows you to send and receive that from dissimilar platforms. I think I read somewhere there's 81 different platforms that MQ can send or receive data from. Um, and the key thing is it guarantees delivery. Um, it's been around for years, since 93. Um, and as you expect from a mature product, it's, um, it's the de facto standard whenever a business must move data um, across platforms, diverse platforms. There's a perception in the, the MQ user community that it's a stable product, and it is. Um, and people ask me, well, does it need to be monitored then? Well, uh, kind of yes. And in, in preparation for this webinar, I spoke to two customers I know that run MQ. We obviously don't run MQ in help systems, so I thought I'd, I'd uh, speak to two people that do. One was an insurance company, and they processed 18.4 million requests or messages through MQ that day. They said it was a quiet day. And should they experience an outage with MQ, their online quoting system ceases to run. They can't, in effect, they can't do business. The second customer was a bank based in the UK. And although they didn't have a particularly high volume of MQ transactions, the transactions are of high value. And they described MQ as, as mission critical. So it has to be monitoring, it has to be working all the time. There's a number of things to, to monitor really on here. Uh, channels, these are the objects that provide a, a comms path between the queue managers. Um, channels have, I think, eight statuses. You basically want them to be running. Any of the other seven are, are areas of concern. There are many queues associated with each queue manager. And queues are best described as an area where messages reside before being processed. So key things to monitor here would be the age of the oldest message on the queue and the queue depth. Some queues would see a, a constant flow of messages uh, route through them. Others, such as a dead letter queue, finding even a single message on here could re represent an issue. If you've got something on a dead letter queue, it means it couldn't get to its intended destination. So that would definitely be a red flag. Uh, what else do we have in here? Queue managers. Um, these accept, process, and deliver messages across um, different platforms. And really, these need to be active. Again, anything other than that, you need to worry about. You're going to start causing bottlenecks. Chuck, show us, um, show us what we can do in MQ. Really popular utility. Yep, and it's... Um... Uh, you're absolutely right. It seems like the larger, some of the larger companies tend to use this technology, and it's it's interesting to say the least. And so what I did is um, I've got a, a group of metrics dedicated to MQ, and as Ash mentioned, uh, we can see right away that our dead letter queue has 89 uh, messages in it. So <clears throat> just double clicking on that group shows all of the various metrics that we're collecting across all the queues and managers and so forth for all the different applications. So that we've got a number of applications um, that are uh, being uh, inter-system communicated with uh, MQ. And so that's what you're seeing here and you're seeing all the various statuses. Now, this is, um, this is a view that basically I threw everything onto. So uh, this is everything that we're monitoring for MQ. We'll show you in, in just a few minutes what a, uh, I'll say a, an organized dashboard might look like around this as well. All right. And Ash, we've got about 15 minutes left. We're going to dive into uh, real-time monitors and notification. And you know we're going to talk a little bit about overall, what does Robot Monitor do for you? We call it our system application and performance monitoring tool. So it does real-time monitoring of uh, 140 different IBMI metrics along with the specific monitoring for the applications like Mimix and VRMS and VIOS and so forth. Highly configurable to your needs. 
and it can very much grow with you. So you can start out very simple with Robot Monitor and then you can develop it as your needs evolve. Uh, storage monitoring is an important part of this, meaning library and IFS growth is also an integral part of this technology. And you know, Ash, there's been more and more interest around tracking JDBC and ODBC traffic. All right, yeah, so the indeed, drill yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah, and, and also in the top left-hand corner there, SQL monitoring. Oh, yep. we, I we think we, we have a webinar next month talking about SQL monitoring, don't we? Again, that oh, can be yeah. Good point. Used, yeah. used and embedded within Robot Monitor to use IBM's DB2 for I services. So that, that adds, again, another string to its bow. Exactly. Yep, this is a great platform for embedding those, uh, those calls. Now, I'm not going to cover all these various metrics that... Um, uh, robot monitor can look at, but I just wanted to show you just for IBMI the, the plethora of monitors that are available. And this doesn't even include the mimics list, which we'll look at next. But I want to show you that in the lower right hand corner are the user supplied decimal integer percentage and text. And that's where you can embed those IBMI DB2 services calls that uh, those SQL statements, if you will, that Ash is alluding to that we're going to talk about in a webinar next month. Uh, we looked at the various mimics monitors that are available, and you can see with the plus sign that all these are are uh, configurable to your needs. AIX and BIOS metrics similar. And uh, as of uh, 2020, we can also incorporate Linux on power. Linux on power monitoring inside of Robot Monitor. So how do you create a monitor type? All right, so basically what you do is you select the monitor type that you want to monitor something new on your system. In this case, I selected an object size monitor, and I said I want to add up the total size of all the objects, in this case, in my Robot HA library. And I want to look at uh, just my academy and my wisdom systems. All right, you can, in this case, you can even define how frequently you want to monitor this. By default, we monitor every 30 seconds, but you can back off from that. Okay, so once you have the monitor itself defined, we will either establish default thresholds, and that's the color coding that you see in the, in the GUI interface, and then you can also establish whether or not you want to send out a message to a message queue, and that's a dedicated message, message queue to a uh, robot monitor, or if you want to interface to robot alert or robot network. And I showed you some of the notification that can go out from uh, this, and we will look at this now in the live environment. And uh, let's just go to my academy system. I think that would be the one to use. Yeah, let's do that. So first of all, he, um, uh, each one of these bars is representing uh, live monitoring. We'll look at the historical monitoring shortly. But just for instance, I've got a uh, monitor dedicated to how much CPU utilization we're using for our GDBC connections. So how do I do that? Under my data collection, I simply say, okay, I want to look at all my QZDA SO init jobs. I select the systems that I want to look at. And then I can establish a threshold as well. I've established a 50% uh, CPU utilization threshold. I can even take multiple samples. So let's say I could take 10 samples. That would be five minutes of sustained 50% on average, or we could do a delta minimum or maximum. All right, and that's going to trigger this red color, uh, and as well as some kind of external notification. All right. To uh, do any of the other monitoring, it's simply a matter of clicking at monitor something new. You can select your category of monitoring, whether it's memory, disk, uh, job performance, job status, uh, Unix, Linux, et cetera. Um, so select your category. So for instance, maybe a job performance. And then the drop down here where it says monitor type shows you what's available for monitoring. All right, so for instance, maybe disk IO. And now with a right click, I can pick which systems I want to monitor or which subsystems I want to monitor. And I could do multiple as well. All right, so by saying multiple, all I have to do is select 
the subsystems that I'd like to set up a monitor for. All right. Let's move on to dashboards. Okay, so dashboards in this product are highly configurable. Uh, we do not ship any default dashboards. Well, actually, I guess we do, Ash, don't we? We ship a, a home dashboard. Yes. And uh, it's, a very, it's a very simple, plain dashboard. But I, the, the idea behind dashboards is that I can incorporate multiple metrics, multiple types of metrics, multiple platforms, all into a single dashboard. Or I may be more uh, interested in creating multiple dashboards depending on the audience. So maybe my system engineers versus my application development people versus my operations people versus management might want a different dashboard. All right. So whether you want your uh, metrics to be real time in a in a gauge format or maybe in a, a text format, uh, or you'd like to see some of the metrics over time. So that's for our default 30 second metrics or potentially even summarized data. All right, so we can present that to you in multiple ways. Uh, since we're monitoring a complex environment, you may have multiple types of applications that you want to incorporate in a single dashboard. So for instance, here we've combined Robot HA and Power HA into a single dashboard. All right, Ash, let's go live. Okay, so everything we've been looking at so far has been in a single system or what we call a system group view. Let's look at our dashboard list. So I've got a number of dashboards here. And just to give you an example, <clears throat> here's our uh, HA-related dashboard. And as you saw earlier, our uh, ELBA Power HA node system was down. All right, so here's our visual indicator that we've got an issue. Uh, Ash, you mentioned CPU utilization is something that, you know, even in the HA environment that might be important to look at. All right, so we've incorporated both HA monitoring directly as well as some system monitoring in the same dashboard. If storage is your thing, all right, here's my storage across all of my partitions. Right, I do have one partition that's down currently, my bell partition, but I can see at a glance exactly where I am. And with the color coding, I can see that my, uh, my system here that uh, we were looking at with MQ is up to 74%, and that's because we set our threshold at 70. Now that's real-time monitoring. Down below, you'll see some summary statistics. So we've got four of my critical partitions and their average auxiliary storage utilization for the last 12 months. Again, just showing you how you can combine multiple metrics into a single dashboard. Here's my production dashboard. Looking at my three production systems, Academy, Gwynbeer, and Wisdom, we've abbreviated the names so that they would fit. So I've combined CPU, batch CPU, disk percent full, spool files, and an out queue, just for example purposes, uptime, JDBC performance, uh, job queue counts, and so forth. And also, down below here, I've got our list of those issues or events that have occurred in our monitoring. All right, so these are our current thresholds. These are the th this is kind of your punch list. All right, and uh, a beautiful part of this is that I can take some of the dashboards and turn them into a slideshow. All right, so I've identified five or six dashboards that I want to see scrolling across my 50 inch monitor in my data center. All right, so I wanna see my storage dashboard, I wanna see my production dashboard, I wanna see maybe a single system and some critical metrics, I wanna see my high availability dashboard and so forth. And we'll just continue to cycle through uh, this. And Ash, th isn't this a beautiful thing? I mean, you could put this on a, a large screen in your data center and, and you'd be good to go. Yeah, and that, that's that's often where I've seen it. You know, the, maybe the service desk have a large plasma and it shows them high level, all their environment. And then individual people would, would have a tailored dashboard that 
you know, just depicts what's important to them um, and to help them do their job better, I guess. They can completely tailor it. All right, Ash, let's move on to historical reporting. Wonderful, historical reporting. So what do we see here? Well, Robot Monitor allows you to um, simply select monitoring metrics of interest, as we can see here. The example shown here depicts overall CPU consumption um, and also what's been consumed by Batch and JDBC. And you can easily add more metrics here. So you kind of get side-by-side -side comparisons often quite important. You might have high CPU, but not knowing um, the reason for it. So by clicking another one of those metrics, you can see at a glance reasons for it. Let's jump onto the next one, Chuck. Uh, summarization. So having the ability to see things at high level is important. Um, it's where you typically see trends appearing, but conversely, then being able to drill into that data so from month to day to hour, right down to 30 second intervals, it's really worth its weight in gold. In my experience, management like high level, techies like to work with the devil behind the detail and Robot Monitor definitely ticks both of those boxes. Um, going back in time, what we see here, um, maybe you'd want to compare this Tuesday to last Tuesday. Maybe you've got a problem now and you know you didn't have a problem yesterday or last Tuesday. Again, we see uh, drill downs in action here on, uh, on Wisdom, where we can pinpoint a period of time and show which jobs maybe had the, the worst response times, those jobs with the highest IEO, or even identify those users that are consuming an excessive amount of CPU that are using SQL. Again, this, this, all of this can be done from the green screen, but this robot monitor brings it uh, to the forefront, all capable within the GUI. Um, what else have we got here? Um, but really, it's not all visualising, not all about visualising that data. Sometimes you need to print or even export that data to do something else with it. For example, exporting the data may be useful for times where you really want to crunch that data to do something else with it in Excel or another tool. And that capability is there as well. Of course, you don't have to go hunting for these reports. As we heard earlier, people want notifications. Um, you don't want to have to go running these reports. So Robot Monitor allows you to build a selection of, of useful historical reports and have Windows Task Scheduler, um, included in all Windows OSs, run and distribute them for you. Again, they'll come and tap you on the shoulder. Once again, these automated, automated reports can be printed, output to CSV, v, or you can just have the JPEGs for inclusion in maybe a service report in a Word document or a presentation that you're compiling. Flexibility again. All right, and with, with that, that brings us just about to the end of our presentation. One thing we'd like to do though is we'd like to know if there is some follow-up. And uh, Ash, I believe we've got a couple of questions that we should address. So I'm going to launch the polling question. And uh, uh, one question that we've got is, does Robot Monitor take a lot of space to store its data? Uh, so first of all, we do have purging routines built in to the product. And uh, you can t tell us or tell Robot Monitor how long you want to keep your detail and summary data around. And we also use um, variable length fields in the product such that we basically compact the data on the way into the DB2 database so it's stored very efficiently. Excellent. Um, another question we have, Chuck, this is probably for you as well. Um, collection services, do we use collection services data in Robot Monitor on I? Yeah, actually we don't. We don't use collection services data. We have our own collection tools that we've developed over the years that uh, collect, as we mentioned, almost in real time, every 30 seconds. You can back off on that if you want on certain metrics. And so then we don't have to abide by the collection services collection rate, which you know typically on a system might be every five to 15 minutes. We can do it uh, more rapidly and, and to our needs. Wonderful, and let's take one more. 
does the product use lots of CPU cycles? Always, uh, always one of the questions when we're doing proof of concepts. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, the, our collection tools have been developed uh, over the years. And quite honestly, we couldn't sell this if this, this was a CPU hog. Now, that being said, uh, we are going to use some CPU cycles to collect your data. Um, so, you know, with, you know, we can't, we can't run away from that, but it's uh, very efficient as to, as to how it does its job. All right, and with that, Ash, appreciate you joining me today to talk about Robot Monitor. We, it looks like we have a little bit of follow-up to do. Appreciate everybody's time today, and uh, have, a, have a good rest of your day and, and into the weekend. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.